morning, afternoon, or evening, loved of God. Welcome uh, to this YouTube channel. This is part three of a six part series on managing our finances, helping us to get out of debt, helping us to be better with the resources that God has given us. And of course, it's always best to go to the word of God to get answers for anything that we're dealing with in life. But besides the word of God, there's also other books that are really helpful. So this series is based on the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert T. Kiyos uh, Robert T. Kiyosaki. Um, and we're on lesson three, which says, mind your own business. The rich focus on their asset columns while everyone else focuses on their income statements. And I would like to clarify as well, in my post last week, in my well, my previous video, I said, which was part two, I was talking about assets and saying one of the assets that you could buy is a home. And I just want to be specific, a home that you can, when I say, a, a, sorry, I said a house. So that's a house that you can rent out to generate income for you. One of the things that I was just skimming through part three today and it said how the rich view the home as a liability where the poor view the home as an asset. And the reason why they the rich view it as a liability is because uh, you, when you get the the house, you have to, provided you've got a mortgage that you need to pay your mortgage payment each month, you need to pay property tax, insurance, maintenance and utilities. Now, he is based in, well I think he's, this is all based on if you're in the US, if you live elsewhere, you may not have to do all of these and I think wherever you are, even insurance is not compulsory to get insurance on your home but you would want to, especially if you're living in a state that is pr prone to flooding or living in a region that's prone to having flooding or fires, then you definitely want to get your home insured. And so that is why they see it as a liability because the rich, they are focusing on reducing their expenses and, you know, increasing the the well, not even so much their income, but increasing their assets column. So that would just add to their expenses. And just to say, just in case it's um, your first time watching this, this is not about being rich. Although it's the book's called Rich Dad Poor Dad, there's definitely lessons that we can learn and methods that we can implement into our daily lives that will help us to get out of living paycheck to paycheck. Myself, somebody who, used to live paycheck to paycheck it really wasn't pleasant i hated it and if i you know had this information earlier read this book earlier or even just saw somebody give a youtube tutorial it would have been so helpful for me to be able to to get out of that 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 cycle that that devastating cycle and so i really want I really want my um, sisters in Christ to be able to get out of that cycle and I really want them to be able to yeah, live not having to, not having more month than there is money, praise God. So I just wanted to, to definitely clarify that. I just wanted to give you some statistics as well. So I was, according to... Oh, I don't know who it's from, so but I was listening to a book on Audible, and the lady said that consumer debt in the US rose to 12.7 trillion. That's, that's not million, that's not billion, that is trillion dollars in 2017. So it's definitely higher now, and I mean, that is just ridiculous. I mean, so much money for debt i mean wow so we definitely definitely want to do better it's she also said that unsecured personal debt is predicted to hit fifteen thousand pounds per household in the uk in 2018 i mean wow i didn't even check how many 
homes there were in the the UK maybe I will yeah do a google search and then put that on the information uh put that in the on the screen and so if you times 15,000 by however many homes there are in the UK then I'll also put how much debt that would be all together on the screen here I mean that is so so much money um I was just wondering actually if I can just do a quick search of how many homes are in the UK wait how many households in the UK so there's 27.6 million households so it won't be written on the screen so 27.6 million times 15,000 oh that's 414 billion pounds and this is just unsecured personal debt this does not include secured personal debt so really frightening figures that we don't want to be a part of we definitely don't want to be having unsecured personal debt um or well i don't want to say all secured debt but for example like uh, getting a mortgage but you definitely want to minimize your debt as much as possible this is another statistic in regards to lottery winners which i was talking about in my first video in lesson one so it says lottery winners are more likely to declare bankruptcy within three to five years than the average american and this is by cf PBS. This is where the person got their information from, which I did check beforehand, and I believe that's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And it also says that nearly one third of lottery winners eventually declare bankruptcy. So you can see if you get money but you don't have the knowledge, it, it will go. And you can win millions of pounds, it will still go. It seems like so much money, and it is a lot of money, but it is almost like it's so much that you can never run out but you really can even if you're in the billions you can still run out of money and that statistic was from the 3rd of December 2018 these are some other key statistics uh, it was on finder.com and it was pub well, updated August the 13th 2020 so really recent this month and some of the key statistics says one in 10 Brits, that's 9%, have no savings at all. A third of Brits have less than £600 in savings. The average Brit has £6,757 saved for a rainy day. The number of adult ISAs, which is individual oh no, no no sorry i'm thinking of something else yeah that's a yeah i think it's some individual savings accounts uh in the uk is up from 10 million in 2017 to 2018 to over 11 million in 2018 to 2019 which is good more people are opening up isas but are they having savings in it i had an isa for years and as quickly as the money went in it went out so i didn't <laughs> have anything in there really the average amount in adult ISAs has fallen from 6,462 in 2017 to, to 2018 to 2,649 in 2018 to 2019. So there, it just, it just showed that even though the amount of ISAs have increased, the amount of people opening up ISAs, the amount that they have saved is decreased. So it's good to have an ISA, but if you're not really using it for what it's meant for it's kind of like defeating the purpose but then again i don't believe in having like millions of pounds stocked in a in a bank that definitely isn't um that definitely isn't a good thing to do the number of junior ISAs in the uk is rising with just below fifty thousand extra accounts opening in 2018 to 2019 which is good we want to get the young people the teenagers knowing about money and um, putting money aside as well the average amount invested is now 1020 pound up from 994 pound last year so and it goes on shows a lots of guess goes into more details about those key statistics 
But what's really, yeah, sad is that 9% of Brits have no savings at all and a third of Brits have, you know, less than £600 in savings. So we definitely, you know, having no savings, that means that they're probably living paycheck to paycheck, which is what we want to come out of. And less than £600, um, we definitely want to increase that so that we can then start investing in assets that will generate income so that you know, we could just you know live live a life where you know we're not worrying about money sadly there are people you know go to sleep tossing and turning worrying one of the biggest i believe it's the second biggest reason i mean you can read online and do google searches and different you know, magazines and different companies will have different statistics but i believe that the second biggest reason why people get divorced is because of money issues so you definitely i mean just being you know financially secure and not having to you know have what one extra thing to stress about and worry about i think is definitely good for your marriage and definitely um you know it's definitely healthy and definitely helps when there's i don't want to say that there's enough things in the world already to stress about because the truth is being in christ we don't have to worry about anything you know the bible says be anxious for nothing but in all things by prayer and supplications um, make your petitions known unto to God. I believe because was to say the God of all comfort will comfort your hearts, or the God of all peace will com will comfort your heart, something like that. But you definitely have peace. Um, I believe that's in Philippians chapter four and a certain verse. Verse. I don't think it's verse four. Let me check Philippians four. Oh yes, and verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, praise God, you don't want to forget the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus, praise God. And that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. So I don't want to say there's enough things to stress about. I mean, definitely there are things in the world to stress about. And if you're in the world, you definitely would stress about them. But being in my saviour, I don't stress about anything. Praise God. And I'm so, 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 so thankful. Um, but yeah, definitely. And one of the ways to, you know, I don't want to be like, okay, well, I'm in Christ. So... You know, I could have my bills piling up and have letters coming through the door with big red marks saying, you know, pay now or we're going to send, um, you know, bailiffs and be like, oh, it's okay. I don't have to worry about anything. No, that's really being in denial. And we should never, um, like, it's almost like trying to tempt God. You know, we definitely have our part to play. So we shouldn't stress, but we definitely have to put faith to works because faith without works is dead and we have to do our part to get out of the financial debt i've had letters come in my home i've had bailiffs come to my home so this was years ago so i feel like i've just been through it all when it comes to finances all the bad side but praise god he really helped me to come out and you know when god blesses you he doesn't bless you just for yourself he blesses you to bless others so i'm so thankful for you know, all that i've been through and the knowledge so i can help others to to come out of that horrible situation that i was in i mean it was it was awful so horrible and knowing as well when you know it's your mom's home the majority of stuff is your mom's and they're coming to your home you know you feel so bad because it's your fault it's your debt and then they're coming to a home that is your parents place or your parent place and wanting to take belongings and, and praise god that they didn't take anything i mean god that's a whole testimony in itself but yeah praise god um so oh yeah another thing is just looking at my list there's two more things which is one there are some assets that is in the book that I wanted to share with you, I did give my take on what assets are. I just wanted to share these assets with you. So it says, this is Robert speaking. So what kind of assets am I suggesting that you or your children acquire? 
in my world real assets fall into the following categories so he says businesses that do not require my presence presence I own them but they are managed or run by other people if I have to work there it's not a business it becomes my job two is stocks three is bonds four income generating real estate which I think it's so good that he's put income generating because you could have real estate where nobody's staying and is not bringing you any income in at all notes in brackets he's got ious got royalties from intellectual properties such as music scripts and patents and he's put anything else that has value produces income or appreciates and has a ready market so i'm just going to kind of abbreviate but um businesses and then we have stocks again and please, if you do have a pen and paper, you should write this down and and take notes um, and kind of think what is it that you, out of all of these, think that would be most that would be best for you to um, to start in investing in if you're in a position. But where you can start investing because I know that not everybody watching this is living paycheck to paycheck not everybody you know watching this is um, struggling there are people watching this that are probably you know quite well off just um, I'm guessing so and maybe you're at a stage now where you have some savings and you want to start investing those savings so it would be good to have a look at this list because this person, Robert, definitely knows what he's talking about and say what is it that you feel comfortable in investing in and also pray about it. Uh, you definitely want to, sorry my writing is not that neat, it's like I'm writing from an awkward position, but definitely think and, and, and pray, definitely you want to pray. Anything that has else has value, so produces income or appreciates and has a Mark has a ready market. I'm just gonna write this all in the description box below in more detail. This is just kind of um, can you see? This is the not really abbreviation, but I haven't written everything word for word, but just almost kind of summarized. So what is it that you like doing, for example? Some people may like you know, buying houses at auctions, doing them up. If you know that you are good at, you know, decorating, that's your type of thing. Because at the end of the day, whatever it is you're doing, there is work. I know they kind of glamorize these lifestyles and you see them popping up on the ads and saying, you know, you're still doing the nine to five and live the kind of internet lifestyle and all of this. And I'm not so much like against it in the sense of, you know, I think it's, it's fine if you don't want to do the normal nine to five in an office. I definitely don't. And if you want to, you know, lots of people are being their own bosses and making money from um, on the Internet. But I don't want to make it seem like it isn't work. There's still work. And that's what I don't like when it's almost like glamorized to the point where you think, you know, for one day for two hours, you can log on and the rest of the week just be like traveling and not having to lift a finger it really is work whatever you do and so you know even all of these you know mega millionaires um and billionaires they are still you know working they don't you know sit on a beach six days a week and then one day you know they're just opening up their laptop to check how their business is doing like they are working and so um i think it's really important to do something that you know you do love has to be the will of God of course but you know I believe that God gives us desires that helps us to know what it is that he wants us to do not always because we could have a desire and it's not what God wants and or we can you know have had desires in the world and then we get saved and then almost put a Christian spin on it for example I always wanted to be like um, a singer wanted to be an artist I loved 
music i still do love music and so when i got saved i thought okay yeah praise god i still got my dreams god's gonna i'm gonna be a gospel singer and travel the world and do all of this and that wasn't god's plan for me and so you definitely and, and i the thing is i still love singing i still have a desire i don't have a desire to be a gospel artist anymore but i still did when i got saved so just because you have a desire um it doesn't mean that that's what God has for you. So I just really want to make that clear. It doesn't mean that. But I do believe that for the most part, the things that we enjoy doing is ways to help us identify what it is that God has for us. And even when um, it's something like, you know, investing, something that we genuinely like doing. So for me, I'm really big on being clean in terms of you know like the, that, that whole um like clean beauty i definitely when i buy my hair products i scan the ingredients list i mean i will and there's words that i know now if it says it it goes straight back on the shelf i'm becoming really ingredient savvy it first started with things that i was eating started to go more into whole foods more you know organic food things that man hadn't really got involved in and there's like a plant that you know there's a tree that bears the actual fruit or you know a seed that um bears the vegetable or something like that um so i that's how it really started and then when i started learning more about the toxins in our hair products in the products we use to clean our homes uh, i really really was just appalled and the fact that people would sell this stuff to us and it was allowed to actually be on the shelves and so for me that is like a potential business that i wouldn't mind going into in terms of producing clean beauty because i'm so passionate about it and there's a reason why you know you want to and i think maybe that's what i should do a course actually it wasn't say a course but like a series on on you know helping you to find you know maybe your passion your your business you really want to start off with the the why the why are you doing it? i mean first of all before anything you definitely want to start off with prayer and making sure that is what god wants you to do but in terms of helping you find that think about you know why are you doing what you're doing can it have an impact um on the world is it helping to make the world a better place which definitely having products that don't have toxins in it definitely is helping us you know reducing the rate of cancer these stuff they have carcinogenic ingredients in it can mess with your fertility and all of these things i mean just awful awful um so yeah, you can just have a look at, and for me i really do like um houses as well i think real estate is something if i was to pick any um i would love probably to do real estate i, I just I, yeah i do and i do like like i do like decor and things like that but yeah kind of <laughs> yeah so that, that's a way for you to um to be able to identify which one of these you want to do and i would probably say just start off with one as well even if you find there's three or four that you like and definitely eventually you can end up having more than one but i would definitely say just to start on one at first the last thing that i wanted to well it's, it's, it's kind of to share but also to ask you you know i want you to leave here actually making a change so i'm kind of prompting you and giving you like an exercise to do and so i want you to think of one thing today just one thing that you can implement today that can help you to save money and for example something that just came to my mind straight away was maybe not buying that cup of coffee that you buy on the way to work or that you just still go and buy if you're working from home and then i just went and did some statistics in terms of coffee like how much people spend so it says here and this is was on the independent newspaper this was released the 30th of october 2018 so probably a lot more now but it says the average british person will drink 676 cups of coffee a year according to a new survey the poll claims that they buy three drinks from a cafe or coffee shop each week on average and drink 10 cups of instant coffee this amounts to a total of 303 pound spent on coffee each year so it just goes to show how you can um it goes to show how 
just something as simple as not buying a cup of coffee can give you uh, extra money to put in your savings and that's something that you can start doing today i mean you may have already bought a, cu a cup of coffee but even if you buy like two or three in a day then you can skip out on your second one or your third one also i was looking at the statistics for oh america it it, it was worse it was by pbfy.com and it says are you a, a millennial that puts you in the age of age group of 25 to 34 years of age if so you're in the demographic that spends the most money on coffee a year on average it's a whopping 2008 dollars per an annum oh that hurts <laughs> the next group of big spenders is in the group age 35 to 44 they spend 1410 dollars on coffee each year still hurts <laughs> All other age demographics spend below $400 on coffee annually, which I think probably is like similar to the average for the Brits of £303. It says by gender, the average spend on coffee varies. A woman is likely to spend on average $2,327 on coffee. Her male counterpart's average bill is $1,934 on coffee. Uh, on coffee sorry coffee I was kind of putting caffeine and coffee in there um by industry the people who spend the most money on coffee from a coffee shop are in finance and insurance I don't know if that's like maybe one of the most stressful jobs but they spend an average of $709 on coffee from coffee shops each year in fact I think probably the worst is probably being within the legal sector but um yeah, I just wanted to, and it says, interestingly, how is it that according to the poll workers in the hotel, food services and hospitality workers spend $278 on average at coffee shops? After all, they drink on average 3.5 cups of coffee daily. It must be all the freebies they get at their workplaces. But I mean, especially as this is geared to women, you know, this is a woman's channel. Um, it's like we spend more on coffee than our male counterparts so we definitely you know the fact that i was speaking to women i that then increases the chances of you spending you know money on coffee so that's one way if you buy a tea if you buy anything a, a latte anything from like you know your cost costa your starbucks you sorry it um it went up i know you said costco there oh my gosh i had to run my rice was burning i'm like I could smell it burning and my rice is burnt but yeah <laughs> um let's try and probably chuck some water and salvage it so yeah so that's the end just this if you do um i really hope you do please um let me know what it is that you're going to be uh stopping get make it a um get an accountability partner if you can you know, make it public you know share um share in the comment section what you are going to be giving up and i think actually i myself should think of something i'm not really sure but yeah i'll write it in the comments as well what i'm going to be giving up something i could give up today it doesn't have to be something that you buy daily because even just thinking there isn't really anything i buy daily apart from like yeah, no, I can't really think of it, but I'll think of something that I could give up, even if it's something that you just spend once a week or, or once a month. But, yeah, it would be good if you can think of something that you could start doing today. But even if you do it weekly, then you can start from today and whenever it comes up, not actually buy it. So, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll save ya. Take care. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I don't really think that's salvageable it's uh yeah chuck some water in it but it's still quite burnt so 
just cooking a second batch now and have to wait for that to cook. <laughs> I'm hungry.